Hello, I am Parapi. This video shows one of the periodic boundary conditions, cyclic AMI. As the name implies, this is a boundary condition for setting periodic boundaries. As a periodic boundary condition, cyclic without AMI is implemented. But the cyclic AMI is also implemented. Why is it? The shape of the mesh and the arrangement of each grid point that are created when the mesh is cut are called topology. But simple cyclic can only be applied to two planes where the mesh topology completely matches. An example is a mesh cut with block mesh. Cyclic cannot be applied to patches with different topologies. For example, the displayed mesh, this is a mesh cut with snappy hex mesh. In this mesh, suppose that you want to set two surfaces, the front and the back, as periodic boundary. The names are Zmin and Zmax, respectively. But if you specify these two surfaces as cyclic and run the job, an error will be returned and the job will stop. The reason is in the specifications of snappy hex mesh. In snappy hex mesh, the shape to be cut is as each STL file prepared by the user. But the mesh is cut automatically adjusted by snappy hex mesh. So, although Zmin and Zmax have the same shape, they do not always have the same mesh topology. Therefore, if it is cyclic, an error will be returned. The cyclic AMI is a periodic boundary condition that can be applied if the shape and the area are the same, even if the, even if the mesh topology is different. I think it can be used in quite a lot of situations. Because if you cut a mesh with snappy hex mesh, the topology will almost not match. Then I will show you the setting method. I'll explain how to set it in the case of the mesh shown earlier. There are two kinds of files to edit when using cyclic AMI. One is a physical quantity files in the time directory zero. Boundary conditions are set in these files, these files, U, or P, and so on. The second is a file named boundary in constant polymesh. First, let's look at the physical quantity files. Let me explain using the file u, velocity. Setting the physical quantity file is very simple. Since we want z min and z max to be periodic boundary conditions, we only need to specify cyclic AMI as their type. By the way, if you specify a value for the parameter value like this, you can give the initial value on the periodic boundary. Then the solution after the second step is calculated by the solver. Even if the value is not set, even if it is in this state, the initial condition specified in the physical quantity file is applied, so I have not written the value, usually. I do not know the timing when the value is required. That's all. Let's set the physical quantities other than U in the same way. Now. Let's check another file boundary. 
the place is constant poly mesh. As you can see, there are various files in the poly mesh directory. Information related to the mesh is described in the files. If the mesh does not perform, the solver tries to read the poly mesh information. I haven't attached anything other than boundary. There, they are necessary when using a moving mesh and the situation like this time. Then the contents of the boundary are like this. The volume is um, small. Information on each patch is described. After snappy hex mesh and before editing this file, for example, it should be written as shown on the left side. The settings of the background mesh, there is the mesh created by the block mesh are inherited to six faces from Zmi to Xmax. All types are set to patch because it was set in block mesh dict. So for cylinder 1 and cylinder 2 at the bottom, the state set by snappy hex mesh is inherited. Type is wall. On the other hand, the window on the right is the cyclic AMI setting. In the case of a mesh of two cylinders like this time, it looks like this. Detailed contents will change depending on the positional relationship between the patches that you want to set the periodic boundary. So this is just one example. First, change the value of type to cyclic AMI. Match tolerance is the tolerance of the area of two patches. If you use a mesh that exceeds the value specified here, a warning will be outputted when the job is executed. I don't really care about the size of the match tolerance, but I always set it to 10 to the minus fourth power. And next, for the parameter transform, it specifies the positional relationship between the two patches. In this case, if you translate one patch, it will match the other. Uh, so specify translational. Then set the translation vector with separation vector. Now Z mean matches Z max when moved one sorry 0.1 meters in the Z direction. So set it to 0, 0, 0, 0.1. Finally, specify the name of the patch you want to pair with neighbor patch. So let's set Z max. This completes the settings. By the way, transform also has a value called rotational. Use this if you want to move in rotation instead of in parallel. Then Instead of separation vector, you need to specify rotation axis and rotation center. Set Zmax in the same way. Only the separation vector has a different value. Since Zmax matches Zmin when moved minus 0.1 meters in the Z direction. In other words, 0.1 meters in the Z negative direction set to 0, 0, minus 0 0.1. The other parameters are the same. By the way, n faces is the number of faces that consists of the patch. The face means the face of each mesh cell. Start phrase shows the lowest number of faces in the patch. You don't need to touch them because they are specified by snappy hex mesh automatically. 
This is the end of the explanation of cyclic AMI. Up to here for this time. I will also post videos related to fluids, so please subscribe to the channel if you like. Bye bye.